Now let's talk about uh, mobility for all, autonomy for all. Um, I'm Nick uh, Maresco. I'm working for Massif, which is number one uh, mobility insurer in France. And um, I'm also chairing the workshop of France Assurer, which is a French insurance federation about connected and autonomous vehicles. Today, let's talk about not massive, but a community of interest for autonomous vehicles. When uh, you ask people about autonomous vehicles, they think about uh, a young uh, white collar going to the city in his uh, single car, let's say Tesla, doing his mail. Uh, or, um, but we don't think both as an insurer and as a mutualist, the mutual, uh, that that's the most useful uh, use case for autonomous vehicles. Our main, uh, ambition is uh, mobility for all, autonomy for all. And this uh, goes through shared autonomous shuttles, mostly electric, and not in the city, but in rural and peri-urban areas. And uh, why Massif, an insurer, should uh, go in this way? Um, first, as an insurer, because this kind of uh, vehicles will change our uh, job, uh, both in terms of claims, in terms of responsibility, uh, manager management uh, risks uh, with um, technologies. And uh, that's why we, we didn't think it was able we were able to do it uh, alone. Thus, uh, we created a community of interest and uh, hosted by Moving On, uh, which is uh, the first uh, uh, sustainable mobility um, open innovation system in, uh, in the world. And um, when you look at the scientific studies about anonymous cars or vehicles, um, you, you may find 100,000 studies. And out of these 100,000 studies, how many uh, concerns, in uh, your opinion, uh, usages, use cases? Do you have any opinion? Less than 200 and that's why our community is not techno push it's really about uh, use cases usage um, for um, users for local communities for business for associations and not alone but through an ecosystem we started in 2019, and um, in 2020, we disconstructed the object in terms of uh, uh, social aspects, acceptability, uh, business model. Um, and um, last year, we focused, um, as we are working on rural areas, about autonomous uh, mobility in these areas with um, uh, two aspects. The, um, the first uh, study about acceptability of autonomous vehicles, not with uh, customers, but with local um, elected persons. And uh, we studied a few of the local experiments in France because you've got roughly 120 experimentations in France about connect, eco, autonomous vehicles. And out of this 120, uh, five to six are in rural areas. So we focused and uh, they, um, um, checked about three of them. And this year, we chose one of them to get on the field and to really um, have a use case approaches and use it.
Uh, and it's an, uh, a common good approach because all our work is uh, available um, and uh, we will be happy to share it with you uh, more thoroughly. Uh, with uh, workshops, uh, with, as I mentioned, this investigation on uh, local elected officials and uh, comparative analysis. When you ask um, about uh, the challenges in rural and peri-urban areas, uh, you've got diverse situations. However, in France, 90% uh, of the communes of the territories are rural, and it concerns one out of three inhabitants. And all of them have three troubles. For, um, the first one is um, a dependency on a personal vehicle. In these areas, 85% of the inhabitants don't have a choice of their mode of transportation. It's the car or nothing. Because there is an absence of public transport. And they, even if some uh, may come to, uh, to Paris or go to foreign countries, uh, most are for local journeys. In France, you had a paradigm shift in terms of mobility policies. Uh, for, uh, there was a decentralization of these uh, policies and uh, going from a centralized uh, national policy to regional development and uh, also an access about the environment and gradual clarification uh, who does what. Uh, and taking or trying to take it in, into account users and citizens uh, in these mobilities. And for instance, a local mayor is in the first league in terms of knowing what is its citizens, what are its uh, his sorry, or her citizens' um, uh, goals or needs, but it's still in the last league in terms of what they can do about it. In, uh, at the end of 2019, there was a, a French mobility law. Uh, with, uh, we tried to promote a comprehensive vision of mobility, uh, including public transport, aid-assisted and shared mobility, and trying to reconsider the governments of mobilities across territories. However, uh, you know, the problem of financing it is still present. Uh, it was exacerbated during the COVID crisis, and uh, there is no currently satisfactory solution. Before going into the local elected officials' point of view, um, Massif did ask, ask the French uh, people 4,000 of them, uh, in partnership with the Institut Videca, which is a, uh, dedicated to mobility um, studies institute, uh, about the French acceptability. And what are the main um, insights? Um, last year was the second year, so you've got a, a switch, um, a little increase about uh, knowledge, and seven three out of four French people express a positive opinion for this mean of means of uh, transportation, whether it's a single car or a shared shuttle or a robot taxi. And it's, uh, this visibility is increasing. Uh, one out of five say that they already seen one of them. It's declarative. But only, well, only, less than 5% um, already tried one. However, when even if they don't try or uh, see them, uh, they think it, it may power out of that 10, uh, bring well-being and freedom, especially in rural areas. But in these areas, uh, when you go where you're uh, in the city, one out of four have seen 
or SEDAS to have seen, um, an autonomous vehicle. Well, it's half of it, one out of 10, in the, in the local, um, in the rural areas, even if it's slightly rising. But in these areas, especially, even if it's, um, it's true for the whole friends, um, there is a, a real interest and uh, a perceived benefit about more inclusion because eight out of 10 think that it will be useful for the elderly to all to drive by themselves and also for people which are disabled or are too young or don't have any uh, driving driver's license or who don't possess a car. And one of the elements about acceptability is trying it, is adapting it. Two out of three feel concerned, but it come, it rises when people have seen it and have used it. So the more they experiment it, the more they feel concerned. That's why if we want to promote and develop this kind of uh, useful transportation, it's important to develop them and make them known. And as for the French people, what about local officials? Are they ready to introduce autonomous mobility to their region? We asked them different uh, topics about the utility. Unfortunately, they have a poor knowledge of autonomous vehicle. What's its use? What's the satisfaction of local people? What are the benefits and what are the risks? What are the may, potential criticisms of local people? And uh, almost 78 persons of the officials claim they knew what it what an autonomous vehicle, but only 13, 30 sorry persons have ever seen it, and nine percent had driven it. And when you compare, um, as we we saw about the entire French population, that they are less likely in rural areas to have seen one compared to cities. And you have roughly three groups of elected officials. 10 persons are reluctant. They say that's useless. It's maybe harmful and it's technology for technology. I don't want it. I don't see what the use for it. It's some money uh, uh, launched <laughs> through the window. One out of four of these elected officials, uh, and by the way, uh, this, uh, uh, this poll was made through the Association des Maires Rural de France, the AMRF, which is a French uh, rural mayors association, who allowed us to contact 500,000 elected officials and to focus on uh, 190 of them. So, one out of four say, okay, it's maybe useful. And as uh, we've seen about uh, French people, on people we have um, mobility troubles, whether they are too old, too young, no driving license, no car, or um, uh, with uh, um, um, on windshields. And the real positive thing is two out of three, 64 persons say, no, we're interested, but it's relevant for everybody, even to reduce autosolism and the battle for the planet. So nine out of 10 are saying that that's a good solution for their region and for rural areas. And what about the difference or the similarities between the French public and them? So we compare the Massif and Vedecom uh, barometer with um, their 
opinion. And in the mind of uh, citizens, an autonomous vehicle is a personal autonomous one, thanks to Elon Musk, for instance. But fortunately, our elected officials think about what's, why it's useful and prefer shared autonomous mobility, whether it's public or endemic transport. One out of two French people are keen to try an autonomous vehicle. And is it positive or is it negative? At the time being, only 15% of our elected officials plan to develop a solution about rural autonomous mobility in the next five years. And you have another gap between the, the two visions. 54% um, of the French public think, I feel safe in an autonomous vehicle. Why elected officials are more frightened. I think that the public would not be, wouldn't feel safe. So maybe they could be reassured by this vision about French people. And finally, um, when you look at the citizens, they think that this technology may destroy jobs more than it creates ones. While elected officials in rural areas think that no, my territory through this kind of solution and not a single one, but in a, a global uh, mobility solution, may be able to make my territory more attractive. And only 30% that think that it, would, uh, it could or would uh, negatively impact jobs. So that's what was um, the vision about elected officials and um, French people about uh, this uh, shared autonomous uh, mobility. Then we compare three out of six local autonomous mobility experiments in these rural and peri-urban areas. Tornado in Rambouillet, uh, close to Paris, Cœur de Brenne in, uh, in Indre, and uh, Val de Drôme, which is in Provence. And what are the main um, insights in these kind of areas? First, it's you need a greater transversality uh, among consumptions. As I mentioned, a single actor can succeed in this kind of innovation. Then, uh, at the time being, it's more a technical experiment uh, because you still have some work to uh, progress to do in this kind of topic, especially in speed, and that may be a drawback. For instance, at the Cœur de Brenne in the middle, we try to, to mix or to rely uh, different villages between them, but it implies to have a uh, higher speed on the road than uh, local um, zones. Uh, and if you don't uh, imply the local political people, it won't work. And finally, the service, the use cases, acceptability should be strengthened. And in that case, uh, we are really uh, promoting um, a single point of access for local elected officials, where they could find the answers to all their questions, whether it's about uh, urbanism, financing, uh, leg legislation, technology, uses, because at the time being, as I mentioned, they are in first thing about knowing what their local citizens' needs, but in the last league about pro, uh, bringing them some solutions or knowing about it. As I mentioned, this autonomous vehicle community of interest is really the fruit of open innovation and collective intelligence. You've got even 
other insurers with us. Massif is an insurer and we have competitors, Maif, BNP Paribas Cardiff. Why? Because we're also working with Michelin or Microsoft or SNCF or even um, some uh, autonomous vehicles um, manufacturers such as Navia or infrastructure operators in Vichy. But it, it's easier. But why are we able to work collectively even with competitors? Because we think that at this time, the moment, it's more about promoting the solution. And then in some years later, maybe we could uh, compete about insurance, but that's not the time. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. Okay, anyway, we will share the email and the contacts, so afterwards you will be able to write an email to go through any points. Carl, if you want to go, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Hello everybody, uh, my name is Karl-Heinz Kastner and today I would like to present our project AI Trustworthiness in Automated Driving, uh, the Upper Austrian Roadmap to the Leading Location. Uh, thank you for the Automobile Cluster for inviting uh, to this project. Um, um, I give you an overview of what you hear in the next 15 minutes. At first, I would talk some thing about the motivation, the goals of the project. We have different stakeholder workshops. Then I show you the poten potential and then our solution uh, uh, in this topic. Uh, what are the challenges? Um, with automated driving, I think the pictures give a good overview. Uh, we have uh, vulnerable people, we have very complex situations, we have unexpected events and autonomous uh, vehicles must handle all these situations uh, in a safe way. Um, and because of that, uh, um, uh, in Upper Austria, uh, uh, we think how we can support the industry. And uh, because of that, we define a project. Uh, it starts um, in April 20, uh, 2021 and ends in December of 2021. Uh, the project partners are the Automobil Cluster, the Risk Software GSMBH, the Digitrans, and the Software Competence Center Hagenberg. And the goals were, um, we would like to generate an USP for the uh, region. Uh, we would like to check the necessary content and competences uh, which are necessary uh, to develop autonomous vehicle. Um, we would like to check the state of the art. What is already available? Uh, what are actual research questions, questions, and then with the stakeholders, uh, we generate a roadmap at the end um, to bring in baby benefit to our region. Um, the first question um, to the stakeholders uh, were, um, what is um, uh, AI trustworthiness for you? And this picture gives you a small uh, overview. We have explainability, we have the verification, robustness, uh, repeatable, uh, security. We have the human factor. It is an, it has always a very big uh, influence in this topic, uh, but also the regulation, the government, um, and with the stakeholders, we define uh, use cases. 
the use cases go in the direction of a uh, virtual driving test and uh, in a use case with an acceleration lane uh, with regulated and unregulated crossings and also in the last mile these use cases are we are uh, rated in a survey from the uh, stakeholders as very important. And then we go in the details. We, we for every use case, uh, we check uh, what is the vision, uh, why, uh, who is responsible, um, um, uh, where are the problems, and and the discussion goes in the direction in the direction that uh, we have a lot of questions uh, and a lot of un unanswered questions about the implementation of autonomous driver dri driving and uh, there are so many uh, uncertainties about the producer uh, in the direction of develop development that from the industry now uh, there are only low uh, willingness to investment in this area and because of that uh, we need a uh, in certification uh, uh, because only with this uh, we have a clear approach for the future uh, um, how to build and how to test uh, autonomous vehicles and uh, for this we do an elevation of the potential and of the benefits and um, we make also the connection to the uh, sustainable goals uh, from the uh, European Union um, in the direction of, of good health and well-being, uh, automated commercial vehicles improve our health and quality of life in the direction of industry innovations uh, in infrastructure, automo automated commercial vehicles increase the effectiveness of the infrastructure and help to expand the industrial location in the direction of uh, sustainable able cities and communities Automated vehicles enable this design of sustainable cities and communities and in the direction of climate action. Automated vehicles will pave the way, uh, uh, paving the way for zero emission mobility. And we make some calculations in this direction and the potential uh, um, for uh, users, uh, um, they can save approximately 1. Uh, billion euros uh, per year uh, and the most effect uh, goes in the direction uh, uh, efficiency, comfort and safety. And uh, in the direction of the industry, um, if we uh, support the industry now uh, uh, in the direction that they can sell their products, uh, the potential is uh, 18 billions in the next in next 15 years. And for this, we start with the definition of trustworthiness and there is the Altai group from the IU. He does a lot of pre-work, but we explain for us the explainability, how the information is used and the vehicle decides, the traceability. These are the information over of the process of designing, training, testing, validating and applying of the AI algorithms. Then very important is the data governments, the data privacy, uh, and not to use the vehicles for any anything else. Uh, the security, the technical robustness, the safety, and the resilience to attacks, the accountability. Um, it is defined with the 
auditability and risk management. Um, the impartially, um, it means uh, we do fair decisions and avoid for any uh, discriminatory bias. And we have also the functional correctness, um, which um, um, goes in the direction of functional requirements, reliability, and redefined metrics. And for this uh, dimensions of uh, trustworthiness, um, we and in the direction of uh, certification, we uh, we check the literature how we can check all these directions. And for this, we found uh, scenario based testing and ex extended scenario based testing, uh, which um, which covers different dimensions of the uh, trustworthiness. We have uh, formal methods uh, for the verification, rule based testing. Uh, rule based testing goes in the direction that we have uh, rules for the government, and this can be uh, um, um, this can be uh, implemented with, with rule based formal methods go more in the medical direction where you have formulas uh, and you uh, uh, test the AI with this and then very important are the explainable uh, uh, machine learning techniques um, where, where you would like to understand uh, what uh, is the plan or, the, or how, how the AI comes to the decisions and also uh, adversarial attacks. Um, adversarial attacks are very important uh, um, uh, to be checked because if it is possible, for example, to to uh, uh, manipulate uh, in the real life uh, traffic signs, and uh, because of that, it is possible that AI makes, for example, a wrong decision. And each of these uh, methods provides a necessary insight, uh, but there are further development and elaboration necessary. Uh, and this trustworthiness results must be certified. We need for this a certification by experts which are involved in this process. Uh, and only this experts uh, can do and can make a decision. Uh, they use tools and non-technical non methods uh, to analyze the systems and only uh, uh, um, with this support uh, we can generate that we have uh, uh, safe autonomous vehicles. And for this, we uh, generate a certification process uh, where at the beginning we do virtual tests. Uh, virtual tests are necessary because it is not possible to check all the possibilities uh, under real uh, under re, uh, re, uh, <laughs> real conditions. And only when the um, autom uh, when the pilot of the autonomous vehicle uh, um, uh, also, uh, solves all these all different test scenarios, uh, we came to real tests on test sites. Here we can check if the autonomous pilot works uh, with the hardware uh, in a way uh, how it should. And after that, uh, we came to a test uh, registration where, uh, in, uh, where we have a pre-certification with experts. Uh, they will check all the results, and if um, the experts say yes, um, um, the autonomous vehicle 
uh, is ready, then uh, we go to, to test uh, under real conditions because the crucial thing is always with uh, machine learning, uh, only if you do uh, tests uh, without uh, um, any bias, this means uh, you define and test only uh, completely new, only then you can check if uh, the autonomous vehicle uh, reacts in the uh, um, how you would like. And after these field tests uh, in the operational, in different operational domains on the public road, uh, we came to the expert audit, uh, to the certification um, uh, where we start, for example, uh, with a certification for a limited domain, for example, for the highway, and then we can add over the time more and more domains. And only uh, with these different tests, uh, we can uh, check the AI and uh, we can build also a lot of uh, knowledge for the building. And with this knowledge, uh, we can also support uh, the industry in Upper Austria uh, because if they know uh, uh, what is tested, uh, what uh, um, what has to be solved from the autonomous wiki, uh, vehicles, then uh, it is easier to build uh, AIs uh, in the right direction. Uh, and for this, uh, we generate a roadmap and research and certification roadmap. Uh, for this, we need uh, the policy legislation um, and um, the first uh, line uh, is the legal framework. Here we start uh, in the first year, for example, uh, with an introduction to amendment and then we need a lot of uh, discussions with the uh, uh, laws and with the uh, regulations to to uh, um, to generate a standard uh, for development. And the next step is then to go with the local development to participation in the EU uh, to approval uh, producers and the next, the next uh, uh, level are the virtual tests uh, with where we start with a prototype. Uh, we go, we would like to have then a valid simulation and tests and where then in the next years we would like to reduce the reality gaps. Uh, in the real tests at the test site, uh, uh, we would like to build up uh, a test site uh, we do tests in restricted uh, ODDs, uh, and uh, then we will we would like to extend the tests um, uh, with uh, representative ODDs, which also comes from the uh, uh, simulations where uh, we would like to uh, find the most relevant edge cases. And at the end, we at the end we have the certification with the expert audits where we start with a uh, uh, test catalog uh, with a standardization and then um, uh, we go in the, to the further development of tests of the test catalogs uh, uh, based uh, on the experience uh, on the experience and only 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 in this way, uh, we can uh, generate a benefit from the industry. This means if we have the possibility to make a certification for uh, very limited uh, ODDs after two or three years, uh, we can generate a benefit for our industry. And what are the possible future scenarios? Uh, uh, one scenario is we do nothing. Uh, yes, then we can generate no benefit uh, for uh, no benefit. But 
if we are in fast follow-up or um, or in uh, only then we can different also different uh, directions in the direction of um, um, vehicles uh, uh, for uh, transport, uh, for um, emergency. Um, and for this, we have defined different scenarios uh, where we do, do nothing, the, develop, the technology is then developed abroad. Uh, we have very little development in Upper Austria and we have no possibility uh, to use this know-how in Upper Austria. Uh, then the scenario we are follower, uh, the technology is also developed abroad, um, but it can be applied in Upper Austria, um, but the lack of approval competences leads to late uh, application and uh, increased risk. Then we are the FASC follower. Um, the FASC follower uh, means that uh, the technology is used extensibility in Upper Austria and uh, the development is going on a good path. And the pioneer is that uh, we are uh, uh, on the top of the development. Uh, the technology ex is extensively developed and used in Upper Austria. And Upper Austria can become a model region uh, when we start in the next years with a uh, certification process. Uh, it can be very attractive. And the big thing is um, the investment costs are uh, nearly the same if you are a fast follower or are you a pioneer because in both scenarios you have to uh, develop the same technologies for certification, for testing, and uh, we prefer <laughs> because of that the scenario four, but uh, the plan is actual. Uh, we have a lot of discussions with the governments. Uh, we would like to uh, um, discuss this uh, um, with the um, with with the real research uh, groups. And um, yes, these are the results uh, from our project um, uh, AI trustworthiness, autonomous driving. Um, a roadmap for Upper Austria. Um, at least here are the contacts. Uh, I'm from the Risk Software GSMBH and here are the partners from the project. Um, if you have any questions, uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions? OK, I think that you will have the presentation as well and the contacts, so you will be able to think of any question. And if you want, uh, Doris from BizUp is there. So don't hesitate to contact Doris as well for any project in the Upper Austrian region. OK, so thank you. Christian, we are a little bit in advance, but if you want to go, the floor is yours. OK, OK. Hello. Um. So I'm starting to share my screen. OK. So, um, hello, my name is Christian Barth. I'm from uh, the Stadtwerk Mobilität in Regensburg, and we operate since last September two autonomous shuttle here in our region. Um, I'm the project manager and I want to give you a short overview of our project and also about the future development of it. Um, this is part of this APR project. It means Autonoma People Move for Regensburg. Um, so there are a couple of, of 
Project Participants, so it's like we, the uh, Stadtwerk Mobilität, also the University of Regensburg is located in the project, Valeo, RVL, Reply Atomis Me, and the Cluster Mobility and Logistics. And everything is founded by the Federal Ministry of Digital and Transport. Um, for the beginning, I want to show you a short video, about seven minutes, which the cluster is made from our shuttle. I think you also need to share the sound. Okay. It's it's just the music, so I yeah, don't it's not think really it's, a problem. <laughs> yeah.
YouTube. So if you search on it, um, you'll find it there. You can also enjoy the music of the of the video. Um, as you have seen, um, we have two shuttles from the French supplier Navia. Um, here, just short some hard facts about the shuttle. Um, the maximum speed at the moment is 25 kilometers per hour, but in our case, um, we are limited for the autonomous drive to 18 kilometers per hour. This is uh, like a low requirement in Germany. Um, according to Navia, also 15 people can be carried in the shuttle, but at the moment we only have eight seats, so we are just using the seated places. This is because we think at the moment it's a little bit a uh, security reason because when the shuttle is breaking, it breaks really hard. So uh, I don't want to stand on the shuttle when it's like making an emergency break. Um, the range of the shuttle is approximately eight to ten hours. Um, depends a lot of how the shuttle is used. Um, and also the climate. So when the air conditioning or the heating in the winter is, is at maximum, um, the range drops, I think, six to seven hours. Um, also, one important part is like how often you have to open the doors because uh, it seems like the doors need a lot of energy to open and close. Uh, charging Charging time is between 11 hours and five hours. It depends a lot how many, how much ampere you can put into the vehicle. And it also has like a mobile, a mobile ramp for people with handicap and wheelchairs. Um, this is also a short overview of our existing track. It's like in a business park here located in Regensburg. It's the Gewerbepark Regensburg. It's about 1.1 kilometers long. It's officially a private area, but the public road space regulations apply there. Um, for our test, um, the speed was reduced to 30 kilometers per hour. Before that, it was 50s, but it was like to to reduce it to re reduce the risk with this operation of the shuttle with 18 kilometers, and um, the rest is only 30 kilometers. Um, we operate from Monday to Friday from 10 to 2 p.m. Um, and one lap takes around 10 minutes. So with two vehicles, we have like a lap time of five minutes with our seven stops on the track. Uh, just some short information about the lessons learned. Uh, we learned a lot in the last couple of months. Um, one important thing was that we have like a driver shortage at the moment. This is because um, you need a special um, training that you're allowed to, to operate this kind of shuttle. So the supplier of the shuttle gives you the training or a company from the supplier. So at the beginning, we had like nine operators who were allowed, but from time to time, operators left the com company or, or do don't want to drive anymore. So at the moment we have like only four left. Um, for this, like we needed to get a special training from Navia. So we are now allowed to train our per personnel, our operators by our own. Uh, this is much more easier because at the beginning we have like this language difficulties between our operators who mostly speaks only German um, and Navia who only applies English or French uh, training. Uh, so in this case, we even had like an extra translation uh, guy at our training. Um, also important for us was like to maintain the shuttles at our own. Uh, normally you like have um, a full contract for maintenance. It means everything is done by Navia or a Navia contraction partner, but um, you can take over some of the maintenance. It was very important because we had some smaller repair work to do. And for example, this charging socket and the front of the car was broken one time, so our mechanics had to change it. For this, you also need a special training from Navia, so you're allowed to do that. Um, and also, like last weeks, we had to do the manual tra uh, manual maintenance of the shuttle itself. Um, major problems are also connected to the weather. 
sadly um, we noticed that in snow or rain especially on heavy snow um, the operation must be suspended this is mainly because like um, this leader sensor who to check the surrounding of the shuttle um, gets confused with rain or snow so it's breaking a lot so it's like it's driving one or two meters and it's breaking and it's driving again breaking so there's no smooth operation possible with these conditions so when it's snow or rains too much we stop the operation at all uh, also time by time we have like other software issues at the moment again so it's like some weeks um, the shuttle will break on specific points on the track at uh, some weeks are flawless without any issues so this is a little bit strange or uh, difficult for us to to have like a real operation so there is still some a lot of communication between the supplier and and uh, us um, so we also need to do a lot of remote access um, for the shuttle um, what was really important for us was to have motivated operators, especially a bit at the beginning. They had to do a lot of like um, small adjustments or software issues or reset the, the vehicle complete. Uh, and also we noticed that at the beginning, a lot of people who were first driving with the shuttle were very interested in it. And they ask a lot of technical questions to our operators. So they're also like, the first in line to make a presentation of the shuttle and give information and like doing commercial work. Um, now we here in Regensburg um, also need to think about the next tracks. So it means like uh, when our project in the Gewerbepark is finished, um, we also want to improve and also add different tracks so we can uh, get more experience and experience in other areas because like you see in this Gewerbe Park was just a, a small circle track there's a lot of traffic but and pedestrians but um, for real um, transportation um, experience I think we need to get out of the circle tracks um, so there were a lot of different tracks which were discussed and I want to give you a short over side how the discussions looks like and which technical and which problem points we we found out um one major point was finding the right area because like we are uh, as a pta we are closely connected to the city of regensburg so that means there are generally a lot of stakeholders who are interested in the implementation of public uh, of new um, shuttle tracks um, there are couple each couple of weeks there is a discussion with the city to okay if they want to have like there a track or they want to have the shuttle moving to this location and there's always like um, does it make sense is this technically possible so it's not like uh, regularly where you have your classic diesel bus you say okay I need there a, a connection or is there you need like a bus stop and we can drive to it so it's a lot more complicated with this autonomous shuttle um, key points especially are the connection to existing public transport networks it means like we don't see the shuttle as a major transport vehicle at all so it's like an addition so for the last mile or in addition to to some buses or like when you have like it doesn't um, need to be the big bus so you can just maybe send a shuttle to specific areas um, this is also due because the number of potential passengers is, is important because the shuttle generally like you saw it is very relative small so at the moment we have like eight people who can take place and this is also connected like for example to the group of passengers we want to to have here um, for example one family with a strolly and the shuttle is full so this is also one point to consider uh, like this picture here uh, this is a place near Regensburg where the city of Regensburg wants to have like a connection with, with this autonomous shuttle 
Um, so this is their favorite place to be. Um, there's the issue that this area will be development and it's around 1000 people living here. So it's very difficult to provide public transportation with a small shuttle like we have at the moment. And also one key point are the technical track limitations. Um, just I want to show you in the next couple of slides because there are a lot of issues with this shuttle which need to be considered. Um, also, if one of the favorite desired tracks from the city was like we have like here a lot of parallel parking. This is a huge problem at the moment for the shuttle because the shuttle is driving on virtual rails. So it means like um, you have a fixed rail and the shuttle is not allowed to leave this rail. Um, the problem here is that you can't place a good track or rail in this street because it's supposed that you drive to the gaps or between the gaps of the cars so let the oncoming traffic through. Um, the shuttle can do that because it's not flexible enough so it would mean that a lot of um, a lot of time the operator would take manually and so in this street no uh, auto, autonomous driving is possible. That means this kind of streets are not possible for us. Another issue at one of the desired tracks was to give away sign and also like on this street it's like not speed limited so the speed limit is at 50 k km per hour so it means like um, shuttle theoretically can drive to these intersections and then there's like a four stop in the program that means like the operator needs to release um, the shuttle and then it drives around the corner automatically or autonomously but the decision if it's safe or not safe is by the operator. Um, we had this case in the Gewerbe pack itself but uh, it was even if you drive with the shuttle it's, it feels very strange when the shuttle is driving autonomously into the intersection, makes a stop and then wait for the for the operator to release it. So it's like was a little bit very exciting moment every time you were driving to the intersection. Um, also one limitations we have at the moment, the shuttle is not capable to communicate with traffic lights because the shuttle only uses leader sensors and no camera detection, so it doesn't know which status the traffic like has. For this, um, the shuttle can be updated by Navia, the supplier of the shuttle, but the other big problem is that also the traffic lights need to be updated and because the traffic lights are in charge of the Municipal Transport Office here in Regensburg. So also like our technology from the shuttle with the technology of this traffic lights need to be aligned. So as a, there's also a lot of coordination needed and only after the update we can uh, operate the shuttle with traffic lights and also every traffic light in the way needs to be updated. So this is also one point to consider when planning a new track. Um, to have this operation track as smooth as possible, we decided to like uh, similar to the packaging transportation to avoid turning left as much as possible. Uh, and the next slide I will show you uh, a route of a desired track. Um, so we try to avoid these situations because we think that uh, turning right is much more easy and safe and also faster. So also it's like suppose the shuttle will drive to the intersection, then makes us for a stop and then the operator needs to look, okay, it's safe to, 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 to go over the corner or not. Um, this is at the moment one of our, our, our favorite future track. Um, it has all the issues or all the things I explained. Um, tries to avoid it. That means like we have like an extensions of our actual route in the Gewerbe Park. Um, we will just use turn rights and, and lighting, uh, traffic lighting systems. Um, we have here in our track three traffic lights which needs to be updated if we want to go this way and, and use this track. Uh, we don't have a turn left intersection with this kind of, of track. 
um, we can still use the base in the Gewerbe Park Ringsburg because we don't we having the charging station and overnight the shuttle needs to be charged there. So we can use this also again um, because it's also like when you move completely somewhere else from from your home base at the moment, you always need to find a garage where you can load this shuttle overnight. So it is from the supplier Navier that you don't aren't allowed to have it outside overnight. So you need like a regulated garage to to charge it. Um, also one advantage for this um, track would be the connection to the existing bus stops. I marked it on the map with, with the H because it's also like I explained, we want to have it as an additional transport service. So it's not the main transport service for people. So we want to have this connection as tightly and good as possible. Um, one open point is um, so we have like a traffic circle or roundabout, how you like to call it. Um, there's this issue that it's like without any construction inside of this roundabout, so we don't really know how the shuttle will behave. And when you are there, you also can see that most people also not really sure how to go with this traffic circle. Um, the next step for implementing this new route would be um, evaluation. First evaluation would be done by Navia, the so shuttle supplier itself. Uh, this is pretty basic. So it's like, okay, you, you send Google coordinates or Google map or like this picture, say, okay, you want to phone drive to there to here. Um, in addition, they want to have like a video of the track so you can go in with the car and make a, a short video of the track so they can analyze this with this Google map or other maps and this video. Then they give a first feedback and say, okay, it's technically possible or not. Um, so this takes a couple of weeks according to the supplier. Additionally, in our project, we also have RVL. Um, part of the project was like to make an algorithm to automatically um, calculate and evaluate such kind of tracks. This will be in our uh, project, the next step to make a parallel evaluation by them. And also like, because we are PTA, um, we need to coordinate with the city of Regensburg because the city at the end has to release the track and um, they also like um, say, okay, we need to go there and there. So they are the guys who are in charge in this kind. Um, some long-term long visions, as I mentioned, um, in our, we are thinking that the shuttle at the moment is like an additional transport service. So the main traffic will be done with regular buses or light rails, which is planned to have in the Regensburg, also in, in train stations. Um, so you have like a um, shuttle service around these areas where you don't need a big bus or something. So just uh, less people who needs mobility, um, then we can use this kind of shuttle. Um, this is also very good because um, with, we can drive with uh, emission-free and silent area in these areas because um, we don't need the old diesel buses for them. In addition to that, we think it's also required to have like a on-demand function with the shuttle. Um, basically, the, the shuttle could do this kind, but it's not implemented right now. And also like um, one important point for us as an PTA is to have like this autonomous driving level four or five, because at the moment always an operator needs to be in the shuttle. And also for a demand service, it makes little sense to have like an operator and wait till somebody has the demand of a shuttle. Um, yeah, this is just a short overview about this degree of automation. Um, at the moment, we are between two and three, but last week in Germany, they changed the, the law that possible um, degree of automation level four is soon be allowed. Um, at the moment, we elevate with Navia if this is also possible for us, because there are a lot of different or difficult tasks for this case. For example, then the operator sits not in the shuttle, so he will sit here at our offices and he will take care of multiple shuttles 
Um, this is also need like the infrastructure. It needs like special permissions. So it will be a new case in future if we want to implement this autonomous driving level four. Yeah, that was all from my side. Um, thanks very much for the attention. Um, are there any questions? I would have a question, actually. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, we know each other, but uh, I think this might be interesting for um, the participants. So, um, do you have numbers for users who are really using the bus, the shuttle buses, um, per day or per week? Um, so, mm. with regard to the question, is it accepted or not, or um, how, what could be done to um, uh, do the journey um, more comfortable <laughs> within this um, 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 city part? Mm -hmm. um, we noticed that at the beginning there were a lot of people in the shuttle, um, around about three to four hundred people a month. Um, I have to look um, what is daily basis. I think the 20 people or so each day. Um, but we noticed that um, now, since the project is, is going, um, the numbers are a little bit uh, sinking. So we think that most people already driven with the shuttle who are interested in it. And now um, only people like moving it, um, using it in the Gewerbe Park when they have like, okay, I want to go to lunch and the shuttle is right next to the station. So because this track is a little bit difficult for this kind of transportation, so it's Nobody is is waiting, especially for the for the shuttle. So you, they are driving it when when it's here, but they don't wait for the shuttle. Um, this is a little bit difficult or or sad at the moment. But at the moment, I think it's around ten people a day who are using the shuttle. So it's okay. Not so much anymore. Yeah, I mean I've. I also drove with it <laughs> once, but yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. Um, I guess uh, especially when people went, uh, go for lunch, they are in a hurry, so they won't really wait for it. But yeah, yeah let's see what the further project brings. Thanks. Yeah, I think also with a, a future new track, when you are required to have this kind of transportation, then maybe more people will drive. But at the moment, it's like uh, just for fun in the Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, thank it's... you. No, you're welcome. We have a question from yeah. Yes, I put, yes, I put it in the chat, but uh, oh. thank you for your um, presentation, really uh, insightful. And in your opinion, what are the main challenges uh, locally to or against um, adoption? But from the different uh, stakeholders, and not only the Navia or uh, the the promoter. Okay, I think the main problems or challenges at the moment are like uh, have a stable process. So we have a lot of cases, even this week, that we need to make an update or, or like do a software change because we have a new kind of error. So um, in our case, it's good because are not forced to have like a strict um, strict time when we need to be at a bus stop or not like on the regular bus. So we are just like driving in the circle and this is, this is in our case good because, but I think if you have a different track, you need like fixed times on each bus stations and at the moment we can provide this. Also we noticed or you can see in the video um, when somebody's parking on the street where it isn't supposed. So the operator has to take over, he has to drive around it, this costs time. So it's very difficult to estimate like regularly track times and everything. I think these are the main challenges at the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, so anyway, you will be able to write to Christian. 
Yep. And you have projects in the Bavarian region who can write to Anne from her tech. And she mm -hmm. would be very really pleased to, to have you. So I think that we are done for today. We have no volunteer for the matchmaking. So we will write you an email and let you know how you can meet people. And if you want to meet someone who presented a project or Nicola who did the plenary session, just write me an email so I can do the follow up and everything. But anyway, you will have a nice form to schedule meetings once it's relevant for you. So thank you everyone and have a good day and everything. Bye.